His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa issued Edict 82 of 2023 appointing a director of the Ministry of Sustainable Development based on a proposal by the Minister of Sustainable Development. According to the edict, Hussein Ali Muhammad Janahi shall be appointed as director of the Coordination and Follow-up Directorate at the Ministry of Sustainable Development. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 83 of 2023, appointing a director at the Prime Minister's Office, PMO, based on a proposal from the Director General of the Prime Minister's Office. According to the edict, Fatima as sayyid Rida Ismail Ibrahim shall be appointed as Projects Director at the PMO. His Royal Highness also issued Edict 84 of 2023, appointing a director at the Bahrain Authority of Culture and Antiquities, BACA, based on a proposal by the President of BACA. According to the edict, Mustafa Salman Abdel Muhsin El Suleiman shall be appointed as director of the Maintenance and Services Directorate at BACA. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa received at Al Wadi Palace the University of Bahrain's handball team which won a gold medal and the Taekwondo team which won a gold and two bronze medals at the University International Sports Festival held recently in Russia. His Highness Sheikh Khalid hailed the achievements of the two teams, which were the best representatives for Bahrain. His Highness also congratulated the team members and the technical and administrative class, hailing Bahrain Sports Federation for Schools and Universities and UOB for supporting university teams, wishing them further success. Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa secured its first major championship at the penultimate round of the Intelligent Money British GT Championship, winning the GT3 team's title, where the battle for the second title will be confirmed at the series finale. On the occasion, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah expressed pride in the team's achievement, congratulated the crew on their team work during the championship's races, which enabled them to win the title and promote the kingdom. 
He stated that the team crew made a remarkable performance at the achievement of the four drivers was the result of their determination on winning and competing with the strongest drivers in the strongest racing tracks in the world. James Cottingham and Johnny Adam won third place, while Ian Logie and Jewels Aginnon finished fourth. The result secured strong haul of points for the secured to GT3 team's title and a first championship for 2C Motorsport. Johnny and James also retained the lead in the GT3 driver's standing, now 13 points clear at the top of the table, heading to the season finale next month. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, met in Washington with the member of the U.S. House of Representatives from Massachusetts, chairman of the Tom Lantus Human Rights Committee, and the U.S. House of Representatives, Jim McEvern. During the meeting, they discussed the historical friendship between the two countries and discussed ways to strengthen bilateral relations in all areas of common interest, including protecting and promoting human rights, combating trafficking in persons, and consolidating the values of tolerance, human coexistence, and religious freedom. They also discussed efforts taken by Bahrain to consolidate the values of tolerance, coexistence, brotherhood and protection of human rights in light of the reform approach of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa and the directives of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Mohammed bin Thamir al kabi met with the Secretary General of the International Maritime Organization, IMO, Kitak Elim, on the sidelines of Sustainable Maritime Industry Conference held in Jeddah. They discussed the IMO's activities and stressed the importance of sustainable maritime services. El Kabi affirmed Bahrain's participation in IMO's assembly next November, as well as the support for the organization's efforts to regulate safety and environmental security standards for global maritime shipping. The Minister of Information, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah Naimi, patronized and inaugurated the Collective Hub Digital Conference and Exhibition with the participation of experts and specialists in technology and the digital world and a number of entrepreneurs enrolled in the All Things Media Training Program. And Naimi stressed the importance of the role played by the media in consolidating the national identity, contributing to advancing growth and progress efforts, and enhancing the development capabilities and gains that have been achieved in Bahrain, thanks to the vision and directives of His Majesty the King and the efforts of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, which made Bahrain a global center in advancing entrepreneurship in all development fields, most notably the field of information technology. He praised holding the conference and the opportunity it represents to meet young people and listen to their future aspirations, hailing the high level of the participants. The minister honored the participating bodies, sponsors, and those that contributed to the success of the conference and exhibition and expressed thanks to the chairman of the board of directors of Tenmu, Suhail al qasaybi and the CEO of Tenmu, Nawaf al kohiji for their efforts in holding such initiatives and supporting the youth. The organizers of the conference and exhibition praised the participation of the Minister of Information, which reflects the interest in enhancing communication, encouraging creative Bahrainis, and motivating them to develop their skills in light of Bahrain's interest in developing national cadres. The Collective Hub Digital Conference and Exhibition was held, which was inaugurated by the Minister of Information, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah Naimi. The minister was informed about the creative ideas and successful experiences in the field of entrepreneurship, especially the media. The Minister of Information toured the exhibition and encouraged young Bahrainis to be outstanding representatives of the Kingdom of Bahrain in all fields in the future. The conference, in cooperation with Temkin, included workshops on modern and digital media and workshops that develop basic entrepreneurial skills, in addition to encouraging young people through an open and cooperative environment. This conference brings together a group of activists and speakers in the field of media who will give presentations and hold discussions related to entrepreneurship and creativity through technology in all new matters in the field of media. An initiative aimed at allowing inmates to pursue their university studies have been unveiled 
In a statement, the Minister of Education and Board of Trustees Chairman of the Higher Education Council, HEC, Dr. Mohammed bin Mbarak Juma, said that the initiative, which is coordinated with the Ministry of Interior, reflects commitment to enabling all citizens to develop their capabilities and contribute to developing their communities. Dr. Juma praised the support of the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Dr. Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, to implement the best practices and care for the inmates rights. A batch of 192 inmates from reformation and rehabilitation centers will be registered after expressing their desire to study for their bachelor and master's degrees. He pointed out that the council held a series of meetings with competent authorities before launching the initiative, expressing thanks and appreciation to the Ministry of Interior and Higher Education Institutions for their cooperation. The inmates will be registered in academic majors, which include business management, accounting, geography and history. And to speak more about this, uh, we have with us on the phone the Secretary General of the Higher Education Council, Dr. Diana Abdel Karim Al Jahrami. Hello, Dr. Diana. Can you tell us more about the initiative to empower inmates at the reform and rehabilitation centers and enable them to continue their university studies? Thank you for having me. Uh, the initiative, which comes as a result of the strong coordination between the Ministry of Interior and Higher Education Council, aiming to empower inmates at the reform and rehabilitation centers um, to pursue their education in higher education institutions is indeed a significant step towards promoting uh, the right to education for everyone through the provision of educational opportunities to um, approximately 162 inmates who aspire to pursue undergraduate and postgraduate academic degrees in different disciplines of their choice, such as majors in business administration, social sciences, and others. In addition to the educational gain, the initiative is expected to help equip the inmates with the skills and knowledge needed and foster their personal, interpersonal, and academic growth and self-improvement, in addition to reinforcing the rehabilitation and reintegration efforts undertaken. Of course, the initiative has involved extended meetings with officials from the Ministry of Interior and higher education institutions to facilitate different mechanisms pertaining to admission policies, registration requirements, program delivery, study systems, fees, and assessment measures and tools. And that was the Secretary General of the Higher Education Council, Dr. Diana Abdel Karim Al Jahrami. Thank you very much for joining us. Under the patronage of the chairperson of Injaz Bahrain Board of Directors, Her Highness Sheikha Hassa bint Khalifa Al Khalifa, Injaz Bahrain held a ceremony honoring all partners and volunteers in appreciation for their continued efforts in providing support and enabling the organization's vision of enhancing the capabilities and skills of Bahraini youth. The ceremony was attended by Her Highness Sheikha Hassa, the Minister of Education and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Higher Education Council, Dr. Mohammed Jum'a, members of the Foundation's Board of Directors, sponsors and distinguished volunteers. Her Highness over, uh, handed over 300 individuals and institutions that contributed significantly to supporting the organization's programs and empowering the kingdom's youth. The honorees included 22 board members, 27 corporate sponsors and 250 volunteers. Bahrain participates in the 45th expanded session of the World Heritage Committee, which will be held in Riyadh. The chairman of the board, uh, Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, attended the opening ceremony of the committee meeting. On the occasion, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed uh, said that the resumption of the World Heritage Committee meeting in the Arab world for the third time in a decade affirms the role played by Arab countries in maintaining world heritage for the benefit of humanity. He congratulated Saudi Arabia on assuming the presidency of the committee and hosting the meeting, highlighting its potential in the field of preserving cultural and natural heritage and transforming it into a global heritage and cultural destination. In addition to its efforts 
efforts of enhancing regional and global cooperation in preserving the common human heritage and its endeavor to achieve the goals of sustainable development. The National Bureau for Revenue conducted 204 inspection visits within the local markets in August. The uh, campaigns resulted in reporting violations that require the imprisonment of administration fines in accordance with VAT and excise law, in addition to monitoring several suspicions of VAT and excise evasion that may require the precautionary closing of several businesses. According to the NBR, it will take legal action against the violating businesses and refer those who are proven to have committed one of the evasion crimes to the competent authorities to initiate a criminal case against them, which may be punishable by imprisonment for five years and a fine equivalent to three times the amount of VAT due. According to the VAT law or the imprisonment for one year and a fine equivalent to double the evaded excise, according to the excise law. On the sidelines of a tour organized by the Chinese Embassy for a group of journalists and news reporters to learn about the work of Chinese companies in Bahrain, the ambassador of China to Bahrain, Ni Ruchi, stressed the continuation of cooperation between Bahrain and China in various fields. The ambassador highlighted the support received by the commercial sector, which provides many facilities for the foreign investments and partnerships to expand cooperation with the relevant authorities in the kingdom. He revealed the coordination between a number of Chinese companies to cooperate and work in Bahrain. He also pointed out the presence of a number of major Chinese companies in Bahrain who are leading major projects in cooperation with the government sector, including SEPCO3, which is working on developing a door station, and CIMEC, which is carrying out the construction work for the East Sitra housing project in cooperation with the Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning. And the relationship between China and Bahrain it's a historical relationship. We studied our communication uh, back to thousands of years. So I think during these uh, recent years, under the guidance and uh, personal care of the leaders of our two countries, our relationship and cooperations has developed very quickly. So especially last year, in the end of last year, uh, President Xi Jinping and His Majesty the King Hamad uh, had a very uh, successful meeting in Riyadh during the first summit, uh, China Arab summit, and also gave the guidance to the further development of our two countries. I believe that uh, in the future our relationship will be better and also our cooperations will be more than before. Still to come in this bulletin, more than 3,000 people are believed to have died in devastating floods across eastern Libya. Stay tuned. Morocco's Ministry of Interior said at least 2,862 people died in the strongest ever earthquake to hit the kingdom in the region of El Houz. The ministry said another 2,562 people were injured as rescue workers race against time in an effort to find survivors. With much of the quake zone in hard-to-reach areas, authorities have not issued any estimates for the number of missing. The epicenter of the quake was about 72 kilometers southwest of Marrakesh, where some historical buildings in the old city were damaged. The quake also did major damage to the historically significant 12th century Tin Mill Mosque. More modern parts of Marrakesh largely escaped unscathed, including a site near the airport earmarked for IMF and World Bank meetings due to be held next month. More than 3,000 people have died and many others remain unaccounted for after floods caused by Storm Danielle struck eastern Libya. More of the victims were in the coastal city of Dirna. Other cities and towns affected by the weakened catastrophe include Benghazi, Baida, El Majer, and Susa. The health minister said the estimated number of missing people are in thousands, but refrained from giving an exact figure.
The Libya Red Crescent said most people died from drowning or from the collapse of residential buildings. The Libyan Red Crescent lost four of its workers while helping in the rescue efforts. Around 7,000 families remain stranded in the affected areas and rescue operations were underway to evacuate them. The Isa Cultural Center is considered one of the most prominent cultural institutions in Bahrain for its multiple departments that provide various intellectual and cultural services and seek to advance the cultural movement in Bahrain. Paper resources and books in Isa Cultural Center are considered the legacy of humanity and the cultural movement. This Bahraini edifice is a pioneering cultural landmark that have advanced the cultural movement for 15 years through the resources it provides that have contributed to hosting many local, regional and international events to be a prominent landmark in the history of Bahrain.